Okay, I believe uh, we're live. Um, hello, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, and welcome to another Spider Strategies uh, free education webinar. Uh, this month here, November of 2018, we're going to be covering using and creating initiatives, tasks, and milestones in Scoreboard. Well, Got to get this live and going. Um, I'm Tom Keating. I have the pleasure and honor of being, again, your presenter here for this month's webinar. I'm the training and customer experience consultant at Spider Strategies, and I always like to invite people to take note of my email address, tom.keating at spiderstrategies.com, and I always welcome any communications from our valued customers and partners. Real quick, before we jump into the actual content of the webinar, just a couple of logistics. Uh, per usual, this webinar is being recorded for future use and referenced by you. Um, all you uh, live attendees are presently muted. You know, I have a tradition of apologizing for that and, and begging your forgiveness that we can't make this more of a, of a dialogue rather than just a presentation monologue from me. But we've learned that if we don't mute the attendees, inevitably there's some kind of undesired background noise of dogs barking or police sirens or something. So we do have to keep you muted. But if you have any questions either during the session or afterwards, please, again, feel free to reach out to me personally or our learning email address, which is learn at spiderstrategies.com. Quick look at today's agenda. Uh, we'll start with an introductory overview of initiatives, tasks, and milestones. And then we'll move into a, basically a series of demonstrations of the use and creation of initiatives, tasks, and milestones how you can relate initiative tasks and milestones to scorecard items, and finally, how to use initiatives as feeders to KPIs in your scoreboard scorecards. The first agenda item, this introductory overview, let's just start by clarifying some terminology. So before we get into the actual software, let's just make sure we're all on the same page linguistically. And so what is an initiative in scoreboard? It's basically a project that is created to address and improve the performance of KPIs and objectives and even KPI areas in your performance management strategy scorecard. An initiative is typically comprised of a name, uh, a description, a start date, a due date, and a budget. All of those are not necessarily required. Really the only thing that's required, to be honest, is a name. But one thing that does kind of distinguish an initiative from other scoreboard scorecard items like, you know, KPIs and objectives is the idea of a start date and a due date. It's kind of an unstated presumption that when you set up your scorecards with KPIs and your objectives and your areas, that you're going to be forever sort of monitoring and keeping your fingers and, and viewing and researching and reporting on your performance forever in, in perpetuity on everything that's in there. Whereas an initiative is intended to be more of a short term, again, you know, project. Now it can be extremely long. You can have, you know, initiatives that last for years, but the idea is that it's going to start at one point and it's going to have a due date end at another point. And then lastly, initiatives can be supported or fed, if you will, by underlying other initiatives and tasks and milestones. And today you'll see some examples of initiatives that are just straightforward simple, and then you have others that are a little more complex and that they'll be fed, like I say, by other items or objects. Okay, moving on to another important term. What is a task in scoreboard? Well, a task is, again, a relatively short-term project intended, again, to address and improve the performance of your KPIs, your objectives, and your areas within your performance management scorecard. It's effectively like a junior initiative. It's an, an initiative light, if you will. Again, uh, tasks are typically comprised, again, of a name, a description, a start date, a due date, and a budget. So in that sense, they really are exactly like initiatives. They're effectively set up in the same way, uh, but they are usually employed as a contributing component of a larger initiative. I, I often just refer to tasks as like the to-dos that live within an initiative and support or feed, you know, progress to the over overarching larger initiative. And then the last term that we'll talk about here is a milestone. So what is a milestone? It's essentially a deadline. It's a, it's a due date or a deadline defined for the completion of an action. Again, that's intended to improve performance of your KPIs. Again, it's typically comprised of a name, a description, 
just a due date, right? You don't provide a start date for a milestone. You just define the, the end or the due date. And it can also, again, have its own budget. And just like tasks, uh, milestones are typically employed as contributing components of a larger initiative. Again, effectively, another example of kind of a, of a to-do within an initiative. And of course, it's something that you have to get done by a certain point, due date and time, so get it done. So with the terminology um, discussed, uh, we'll get into a demonstration here. What I'm going to be inviting you to do is join me at a, looking at, we'll call it a case study of how we use initiatives, tasks, and milestones at, in the marketing department at our Mobile World Inc. company, which again, hopefully you're all familiar with that sort of sample or playground environment that we make available to all of our, our customers and partners. And we're going to be going back in time and looking at the summer of 2018, where what we did over that summer is we used scoreboard to identify performance issues. We created some initiatives, tasks, and milestones to correct those issues. We consolidated the overall analysis for easier and more attractive you know, presentation, consumption, and visualization. And then we analyzed and reacted to the initiatives and what kind of impact they were really having or, or maybe not having on the issues that we had identified. So I'll jump out of uh, PowerPoint here and we'll bring up our good friend scoreboard, spider strategy scoreboard. I always like to start demonstrations from the scoreboard homepage. So of course, here we sit at the homepage. And what we'll do is we'll jump into our, our marketing organization. So I'm gonna navigate into the scorecard section and then I'll make sure that I'm in the correct organization, which in our case here is the mark, marketing organization. And we'll just quickly reflect on the nature of the scorecard that presently exists within that marketing organization. It's a pretty simple scorecard comprised of two objectives. First, to improve brand awareness. Second, to increase lead generation. Um, for this demonstration and this kind of case study or story, we're gonna be focusing our attention just on the objective to increase lead generation and the underlying five KPIs that all roll up to and feed, you know, the increase lead generation objective. Again, I would ask you to take note in the far upper right corner that we are, we've jumped into a scoreboard time machine and we're back at the end of May, 2018. And what we're doing here is just taking some time to analyze our performance against this objective of increased lead generation. Now we can, of course, one by one, take a look at all of these uni unique KPIs and view that you know their performance over the past 12 months or so. But we've also created for our, our ease of use and, and presentation in the marketing department, we've created a dashboard called the Increase Lead Generation Overview Dashboard, giving us a nice consolidated, simple consolidated view of our performance across these different KPIs within that objective, right? So, Again, back in the idea of the time machine, here we sit at the end of May 2018. And of course, thanks to the normalized scoring and the color coding that we um, you know, offer here through Scoreboard, of course, we can see that it, there are certain red areas where we're kind of underperforming and or we're on kind of a downward trend from the previous time period. So some investigation that we did back at the end of May was we started in the upper right by looking at, at the client meetings KPI. We wanted to see what's going on there. And it's, you know, it's green, so we're, we're overperforming. We're past our goal, but we also see a downward trend from the previous uh, month of April. So it's a little bit concerning, but we're still in the green, so it's really not that big of a deal. So we'll navigate back to the, our dashboard. Down in the lower right, we've then investigated leads to see what's happening there. And this is really kind of a troubling trend that we see here within leads. Um, we, we acknowledge that we're still in the green, we're basically pretty much right at the threshold of, of yellow and green, but we're down two from the previous month in terms of leads, and there's a very disturbing downward trend occurring from all the way back in November, where we're just continuing to do worse and worse mo month over month. So we take note of that and say, we got to do something about that, right, folks? And then one more thing back on the dashboard is in the upper left, we have ad clicks, which is doubly concerning before we even dive into it. You know, we're underperforming, we're under our red threshold, and we're down 150 from the previous time period. So again, if we dive into that, drill through and take a look at the performance here, we see the same kind of downward trend, but it's even more concerning because we've long since left, you know, overperforming in January, and now here we are in May, 
desperately underperforming and we're, you know, again, just a consistent downward trend, which is, of course, concerning. So after analyzing that, what we decided to do in the marketing department was to create a couple of initiatives. So I'm going to jump to the initiatives section over in the left uh, black navigation pane and share with you the two initiatives that we, that we came up with, again, back in uh, late May of uh, 2018. The first was an initiative to increase quantity of leads. The second was an initiative to increase quantity of ad clicks. I'm going to jump into edit mode here just so we can review the, the setup nature of these two different initiatives. The first, increased quantity of leads, is a pretty basic one. We, of course, gave it a name. We gave it a simple description, effectively just saying, we got to increase leads. We're providing you a budget. Use it any way you want. Just make immediate incremental improvements, please, in terms of quantity of leads. We set it up as an initiative with a start date of June 1st, 2018, and a due date of August 31st, 2018. And we gave it a total budget of $5,000. And lastly, we decided to assign the ownership of this initiative to my, to my ugly twin brother, Teak Keating. So that's the setup of our first initiative. The second initiative I'll click on is the increased quantity of ad clicks. Note that I'm still in edit mode. And I just want to point out some fundamental differences of this initiative as compared to the one we just viewed. Again, we gave this initiative a name of increased quantity of ad clicks. We are a little more specific about what we're going to be doing here. We're going to employ a combination of tasks, right, to increase the quantity of ad clicks. Again, we set it up as an initiative, but note that we didn't provide this initiative itself with a start date or a due date or a budget. And we, again, then assigned this initiative to, again, my brother, Teak Keating, all right? And then we went and created some tasks that were going to feed or support that overall overarching initiative. The first task was to put a special offer in the headline. And we, you know, someone came up with this idea because they know that the headline of your ad is often the first and only thing that sometimes people navigate through. So let's get a special offer in our headline. Again, in this case, we set this up as a task and we gave it a start date again of June 1st a due date of August 31st, and a total budget of $20,000. And once again, we put the onus to own and be responsible for this task on, again, Mr. T. Keating. Moving on, we set up another task to research main keyword and display URL. Again, the idea here is if you put a, a, an appropriate keyword in your URL, people can get to it faster, and in theory, will improve the, the quantity of ad, uh, of ad clicks, I should say. Again, this was set up um, as a task, again, with a start date of June 1st. Note here that we gave a due date for this one of the middle of August. We wanted to get this, this research done in advance of the end of August because we're going to set up a milestone for the, the definition of that keyword. Again, in this case, we gave it the total budget of $5,000, again, the owner of Mr. T. Keating. And then lastly, folks, we created a milestone to de actually define that may main keyword for display in our URL, okay? So this is just a quick look at you know how you set up a, a, a milestone. Again, you select the type of milestone as compared to initiative or task, give it simply a due date, and if appropriate or necessary, a budget. So I gave it a simple $500 budget here in this case. And again, Teak Keating is the owner and assigned uh, owner of this particular milestone. So what's cool, if I jump out of edit mode after we've viewed the setup of all of our you know, initiatives and tasks and milestones, if I click on the increased quantity of ads initiative, you'll see that it does have a total budget of 25.5K. Um, and again, you're viewing at this point, you know, the software is acknowledging where I am live today. I kind of had to jump out of the, t the time machine right now. So this is back to showing me, you know, the information that we have on this overall initiative at this point in time. But it's great that the tasks and the milestone automatically roll up into the, if you will, the parent initiative of increased quantity of ad clicks. And so that was why we didn't need to define its own start dates, end dates, and budget. Okay. Now, once we had these initiatives in place, we also then paused to reflect on, well, where do we expect these initiatives to either have some impact or be impacted by other existing scorecard objects uh, within our um, marketing department? 
So if I'm just going to scroll down here and note that at the overview tab of this increased quantity of leads uh, initiative, we related the measure of ad clicks and the measure of leads to this. Because obviously, if we're looking to increase the quantity of leads, we're anticipating and hoping that it will improve the overall performance that we've seen, which is the descending, you know, performance, poor performance there. We hope that that will be improved. And we also speculated that the quantity of ad clicks will have some impact on our ability to increase the quantity of leads. So we, simul we also similarly, I should say, related ad clicks to this initiative, okay? And then with regard to increased quantity of ad clicks, we also um, related ad clicks, client meetings, and leads to this particular initiative as well with the same idea that, of course, our initiative should improve or increase the quantity of ad clicks. It will hopefully increase the quantity of client meetings and also will hopefully generate more leads for us. So those are all related. And the nice thing here is that when you relate scorecard items to an initiative, you have kind of a retroactive linking, if you will, or relationship between the two. So if I were to go to look at client meetings and just look at that one single KPI, note that while I'm viewing that KPI, it also has a related item back to the increased quantity of ad clicks initiative. So I have kind of a vice versa relationship between those two related items. If you set up a relationship on one side, it's also going to be reflected visually and provide you with access on the other side as well. So um, what we did then, of course, folks, I'm just going to jump back into the dashboard, is after setting up everything in terms of the initiatives, we move forward in time. So in this case, I sorry, I have to move a toolbar here, guys. My, Go to webinar toolbar is in the way. I can't get to my navigation button. There we go. So we've moving ahead here in time to June of 2018. And we see, of course, some change performance. And the two uh, uh, KPIs that we cared the most about and set up the initiatives around were leads and ad clicks. So if I click on the leads to investigate further what's happening with leads, you see that, uh-oh, we're still not doing any better. One month into our initiative, we're actually doing even worse than we did at the end of May. We're doing worse in June. And that's, you know, kind of, of course, disappointing and a little bit troubling. And if we look at ad clicks, we see that we're still in the red, but we see at least a slight uptick in terms of performance from May to June. So we're improving. We're still in the red, but we're, but we're getting a little bit better. So hopefully the initiative is having the type of effect that we want. Now, this type of navigation, jumping back and forth, you know, from, from dashboards, overview dashboards, down into detail, KPI information is wonderful, easy drill through, no problem. But we also acknowledge that it might even be easier if we can just simply consolidate views of our initiatives and our tasks and then the associated um, KPIs that, that are impacted by them. So we created a couple of additional dashboards. So the first one is our increased lead dashboard, where, of course, we're presenting the leads KPI performance, its historical performance over the past uh, seven months. And then down below it, we have visibility in terms of how we're progressing with our initiative. So we see that at the end of June, our initiative um, to increase quantity of leads was 30% complete and we had spent $1,100 of the budget. And down along the bottom, if we want even a little more information, I can click on the Gantt chart bar and I can see that, well, as compared to our, our, our projected schedule, we're, we're going to maybe be about six days late. And it looks like we're projected to be a little over budget if we continue with the type of performance and spending that we've done to this point. And this is a nice uh, consolidation of both score, scoreboard, you know, uh, scorecard items, as well as initiatives all on one dashboard. And if we look at the increased ad clicks dashboard, we have a similar but a little bit different presentation here where we can see, again, the ad clicks performance over time and, again, a visibility to um, how we're doing on the tasks to put a special offer in the headline and to research the main keyword for display URL, okay? So with that said, let's, again, jump back in our time machine and forge ahead to the end of July 2018. So let's see. Here we go. So if I go back to the increased lead dashboard, we still see a very you know, concerning trend where our leads are still decreasing, even though we're two months into this initiative. And that with regard to the initiative, you know, we're, we've completed 60% of it. We, we've spent $3,700. 
Um, and as we look at our projected schedule, we're going to be six days late and 14% over budget and just overall very dissatisfying results. And what we did at this point was we decided to pull the plug on this initiative because even two months into its three month duration, we're not getting any kind of positive results. And we decided to stop burning our, our money, stop wasting our money on this initiative and figure out another approach to increasing leads. And that's as opposed to the initiative to increase the ad clicks. And again, if we reflect our performance here on that dashboard, we see a, a nice trend where we're going up from May to June and even further up into July. Again, we can reflect on the performance of our initiatives and see that uh, even at the end of July, uh, we had we were 90% complete with this with the performance on this initiative. We'd only spent $3,000 of the budget, which was great. And if we go and click on our overall initiative to increase quantity of ad clicks down in the Gantt chart at the bottom, you can see that we're on schedule and we're and we're going to be under budget in terms of spending. So great results so far on the increased ad clicks dashboard. So again, forging ahead in time towards the end of August. Again, similar type performance with this uh, increased ad clicks initiative and the, and the outcome that it's having on a quantity of ad clicks. And just one more month here getting into September, we see that it comes September, we had improved so dramatically that we were even exceeding our goal of 1,500 ad clicks per month. So the net net here, folks, what I'm hoping is coming across to you is that we used both scoreboard KPI information and scoreboard uh, initiative information together to get a nice overview perspective and an understanding of how the initiatives that we put into place actually did positively or <laughs> even maybe negatively impact the performance that we had aspired um, to change and improve. Okay. That wraps up that demonstration. Again, just a, qu a quick review of you know what we did there. We identified performance issues. We created the initiative's tasks and milestones. We consolidated the analysis, and then we actually used our analysis to understand what kind of impact they were having on the, uh, the actual business. Okay, now back to the, we'll call it the educational basics. I'm gonna ask you guys just to step back from that kind of free form demonstration that I just gave you. We'll get a little bit academic here, kind of initiative tasks and milestones 101. You know, what are they, where are they, and how do you set them up in scoreboard? And this section of today's lesson will be in screenshots because I want to be able to just highlight certain areas of the screen and, and draw your attention to certain things. So we'll start again at the home page. When working with initiatives, tasks, and milestones, you're always going to enter into the initiatives section of scoreboard. Upon entering that section of scoreboard, you're going to be prompted to say, well, which organization do you intend to work with? Uh, in the listing of the organizations here, you'll see that only Mobile World Inc. is filled in with a white circle. All the other circles are empty. That's just a visual indication that Mobile World Inc. is the only organization that presently has any initiatives, tasks, or milestones defined in them. That doesn't mean I can't go work with the other organizations and create something in there, but we're just gonna enter into the Mobile World Inc. organization. You see now on the far left, there's a blue bar next to the initiative section header, indicating that that's what's open. And also in the secondary black navigation pane, we've got a little white bar next to migrate servers to cloud, indicating to me that that is the initiative that I'm presently viewing. I'm looking at this initiative on the overview tab, and the overview tab gives you some really fundamental information. It presents whatever type of description may have been provided. It will indicate the total budget defined, what budget is remaining, your start date, your due date, and any indication of the time that has elapsed. It also shows you a projected schedule. In this case, when this capture was taken, it's projected to be 21 days late, and it tells you what date it actually thinks it will uh, end. The project will wrap up and be done. And then, of course, with regard to the projected total budget, we see that as of right now, it's projected to be, um, you know, $2,500 under budget or 1.7% of the total budget. Now, a very common question that comes up right here before I proceed to talk about what else is on this screen, this overview screen, very often people will pause and stop and say, wait a minute, Tom, 
how how are you coming up with this projected schedule and this projected total budget? What what's going on, if you will, behind the scenes? So what's being employed to determine project uh, schedule, projected I should say schedule, and projected total budget is a, a calculation and algorithm called earned value management. And what earned value management is, in just a simple sense. Is a project management technique for measuring and calculating project performance and progress. And it, what it does, it has the ability to combine measurements of the project in, in a, like a triangle sort of way, uh, addressing scope, time, and cost all simultaneously. And the idea is that in scoreboard, this earned value management is able, able to provide you with accurate forecasts of project performance and highlight the schedule and budget issues that you should probably be aware of while you're while you're managing your various projects. So that's just a, a brief overview of earned value management. Um, if anyone has any real particular uh, questions about the, the math, if you will, or the calculation that's going on behind the scenes, feel free to get in touch with me and we can try and get a little more into the nitty gritty. Um, forging ahead with just what's on the screen here while we're looking at initiatives, we've got a graph or a chart down along the bottom. We don't really see it all, so I effectively just scroll down here. So we have a better look at the chart or the graph that's giving us a historical performance overview of how we're doing in terms of our percent complete and our budget spent over time. And again, the related items that we already talked about a little bit earlier are presented down at the very bottom here of this overview um, screen. Before I move away from this screen, just with regard to the graph, um, you can, of course, employ a graphical overview of your historical performance, or you can toggle over to a status updates view of your historical performance, showing you a more of a tabular, detailed tabular view of the dates when updates were provided, the percent complete at that time, and the budget spent to, to date, again, at that time. In the lower left-hand corner, there is an add status update button. So if it's appropriate or you, you need to update this initiative in any way, you can click on the add status update and provide, again, the date, the percent complete, and the budget spent to date. And of course, you know, each of those rows over on the right, you know, you can provide notes, you can edit the values, and you can just outright de delete any of those entries if and when appropriate. Um, just to direct your attention up to the top, what we've been looking at here so far is just the overview tab of an initiative. There's also a timeline tab. And on the timeline tab, you're presented with a, a Gantt chart style presentation of your initiatives. Um, it, that will be up at the top of this uh, timeline page. And down at the bottom, we have kind of a, a timeline magnifying, or, or I guess like I always call it a magnifier, where you can expand or contract the, the, the quantity of time that you're viewing up along the top. So a drag and drop type process along the bottom will control the, the time frame or the timeline that you're viewing up along the top. And if you were to click, as you saw me doing earlier, if you were to click on either of those, those Gantt chart bars, so in this case, I clicked on the red migrate servers to cloud bar, and what I see here is some of the detail information, the descriptive information, as well as the projected schedule and projected total budget, which we can get off the overview tab, but it's easily and conveniently accessible to you here in the timeline view as well. Okay, um, again, just kind of a review of how these initiatives are set up. We, we covered this briefly in my earlier live demonstration, but if you, if you want to work with a, an initiative, you can get into edit mode. You see the edit button at the bottom. Once you're in edit mode, you have the opportunity to do everything you, that you set up when, when you initially define the initiative, and you can, you can make adjustments if appropriate in terms of editing. So again, as we talked about earlier, all initiatives have a name. That's, that's really the one requirement for an initiative is a name. You can optionally provide a description, a helpful description. Over on the right, of course, you have to select if you're setting up an initiative, you want to select the appropriate type as opposed to a task or a milestone. And again, as we saw earlier, define a start date, a due date, and if there is a budget associated, which there doesn't always have to be a budget associated with initiatives, tasks, and milestones, but if so, you can provide the total budget value there. And then, of course, as we saw earlier, you can assign users and groups to be responsible and be owners of initiatives or tasks or milestones. Um, again, in terms of different types of objects that you can create, we've talked about this, but initiative, task, or milestone are available to you when you create a new initiative item. You just use the, the type drop down in the upper right hand corner. 
to make sure you're just defining the appropriate type of object. Um, and then again, just to review the idea of a, it's a more complex, if you will, initiative. Uh, this is an example of like what we saw with increased ad clicks earlier, but this is an, an initiative to build a search engine optimization capability, which that initiative itself was defined, of course, with a name and a description, set up as an initiative, but like we saw earlier, the initiative itself was not set up with a defined start date or due date or total budget, and that was intentional because we knew that we were gonna be setting up additional tasks or milestones, which would in, in turn feed things like start date, due date, and budget information up to the parent uh, um, initiative of build a SEO capability. So again, just a quick review of what a task looks like when you're in the overview tab, looking at an existing task. Again, you of course see its name, uh, you view the budget, the budget remaining, start date, due date, everything just like what we saw with initiatives. Again, an like indication of whether you're on schedule and or on budget. And again, a graph at the bottom giving you same type of visual presentation of how you're doing with that task. Again, I alluded earlier to tasks being sort of like junior uh, initiatives, and they effectively work the same way as initiatives. They just are typically intended to be for even shorter periods of time, more more condensed or concise efforts or work to, uh, to improve performance. Um, again, when setting up an initiative, uh, or sorry, a task, it's just like setting up an initiative. Again, you get the opportunity to provide a name, set it up with a type of task, start date, due date, and a total budget. And again, you can assign you know, users. In this case, no one was assigned specifically to this task, but you can certainly assign users and groups as well. Uh, milestones, uh, same type of view in terms of an overview of, of a milestone. You view the budget, budget remaining, the due date, and then again, whether you're on schedule and or on budget or off schedule or off budget. Um, and again, you can add status updates down along the bottom once as you're progressing and working towards a, a, a defined milestone. Um, again, the setup of a milestone is very similar to the setup of initiatives and tasks. The primary difference is that you don't have a start date, but everything else is effectively the same in, in terms of providing a name, an optional description. Again, remember to select the type of milestone when you're setting it up, and then provide it with its due date and budget information, and if desired, assign users and groups to this, to this milestone. Uh, okay, so this is just another example of a task. I don't think we need to spend any time reviewing that. And then, again, just a, a, another quick look at the timeline tab. I just wanted to show this one to you because the last time we looked at the timeline tab, it was really quite simple. There were just two bars for the two existing initiatives. In this case, you can break out and expand the view of the build SEO capability to view the unique and individual tasks and milestones that are part of that build of SEO capability and gain a good understanding of how those unique tasks and milestones each have their own defined timeline. You can get a sense of how you're doing in terms of fulfilling those and whether, again, you're, you're on time and on budget. Um, and one thing I didn't mention earlier is when you're looking at the, the Gantt charts here on the timeline view, uh, red, of course, is an indication that somehow you're either behind uh, schedule or you're over budget. And then blue means that you're both on schedule and you're under budget. So you're, you're doing great. If you're blue, uh, you're doing something is concerning somewhere if it's red. Okay. So that takes care of my, if you will, PowerPoint introduction to just the, the where, the why, and the, and the how of um, initiative tasks and milestones. And now it's time to get into just a, a live, me doing it live, uh, creation of some initiatives, tasks, and milestones. Um, the story here is that we're going to um, jump into a different organization. So I'm going to go from marketing. I'm going to go to the financial organization and take a look at the scorecard that we have here in the financial organization. I just kind of want to, if you will, set up the story for what we're going to do and, and why we're going to do it here. If I open up the revenue objective or theme area, and take a look at training revenue. So you guys know that training is very near and dear to my heart. And so for today's purposes, we're gonna focus on the training revenue that we have been uh, generating here over the past couple months. So you see that on the graph, you see that over the past months of August, September, and October, 
our training revenue is number one, it's decreasing. Number two, it's definitely under our red um, flag value. So we're, we're very concerned about what's going on with training revenue. And the story is that historically we have, we have outsourced the, uh, the uh, creation, the production and the delivery of training to one of our, one of our business partners. And what we're going to do is make the conscious decision to bring uh, the, the, the creation and the delivery, the production and the delivery of training materials, we're going to be bringing it in-house at, at Mobile World, right? So what we want to do is define an initiative to set that up. I'll go, I still, I'm still within the financial organization. I've clicked initiatives. There are no existing initiatives. So I'll click on the create initiative button, and we'll give this one the name of develop Sorry, guys, bad typing and, and even worse eyes. Bear with me here a second. Develop uh, training. Training internally. Okay, so that'll just be the name of our initiative. We'll give it the start date of uh, the very beginning of December. So next month, you know, we're nearing the end of November here. So we're going to go back. We'll go into December of 2018, and we'll go ahead and start it on the 1st. Even though that's a Saturday, we'll still set that up as our start date. And then with regard to the due date, we're going to give ourselves just a couple months here to get this done. We want to get this done, hopefully, um, by the end of January. Okay. Actually, folks, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to, change, I'm going to change up on you here. We're going to set this up as, as one of those initiatives that doesn't actually have um, the um, a budget and or a timeline, okay? So we'll just go ahead and set this up as it is, develop training internally with an initiative, and we'll just say create. So we've got effectively an empty initiative, and then what we want to do is create another new initiative, and in this case, we will set this up. Oh, I'm sorry, this is going to be a task. So we'll set this up to recruit a training manager. Oh, gosh, guys, bad typing. Okay, we're going to set this up as a task. We're going to give it, again, the start date of December 1st, 2018, and we'll give it a due date of the end of January uh, 2019. Let's do it this way. Okay, end of January 2019. We'll give it a budget to recruit a training manager of $10,000. And then I'm not going to bother, you guys see how I type, so I'm not going to bother to define it. A description for this one because we don't have that kind of time. So we've set up a new task. Now one thing to take note of is that the rec recruit a training manager is just going to be populated uh, by default outside of developer training internally, but you can easily just drag and drop to make it a new element of that develop training internally. And you also can start the process by clicking on um, the initiative into which you want to put a task or a milestone. So in this case, We've set up a task to recruit a training manager, which is great. And now what we want to create is a milestone. So we'll create a new initiative item, and this will be to hire a training manager. Okay, and we're going to set this up again in the upper right as a milestone, and we'll set the due date for that to be February 15th of 2019. And in this case, we'll give it a budget. Uh, actually, we're not going to provide this to uh, uh, with a budget, okay? Because we shouldn't really need money to hire the training manager after we've already spent a bunch of money recruiting the training manager. So we'll click Create to set up that new milestone. Then we'll set up another um, in, uh, task here within the Develop Training Internally Initiative. And this one will be to find a web platform for delivery. So I'll just put it here, find web platform.
Okay, we'll just leave it at that. Find a web platform, and the implication is for the delivery of our training material, but material online. And we'll set this up again as a task with, again, a start date of December 1st. Oops, I went too far. December 1st, 2018. And the due date, again, of January 31st, 2019. Uh, uh, let me just navigate out here to 2019. What in the world? Okay, so the end of January 2019 is my due date. And in this case, again, we'll provide it with a budget of $5,000. And we'll click Create. Okay, so um, hopefully you get the idea of how to set up an initiative and a task and a milestone at this point. And I'll click Done to be done establishing our newly created developed training internally with its associated tasks and milestones. And then just to touch on the idea of the related items one more time, this idea of uh, developing a training internally, down towards the bottom here we have the related items. And what we like to do is relate some of our revenue and salaries and wages measures or KPIs to this newly created initiative. We'll go here and we'll add a scorecard item and we'll go to the revenue theme and we're gonna of course associate training revenue and we'll also associate overall revenue. So another scorecard item here, same general area and we'll associate the overview of revenue to this as well. And then one more thing we'll add here is another scorecard item, which is in our operating expenses, salaries and wages, with the implication that, of course, if we're gonna be you know, hiring, for instance, a new training manager, then we're gonna need, that's gonna have some impact on salaries and wages. Okay, now we can certainly work with this uh, initiative and all of the underlying tasks right in here, but like we saw earlier, we acknowledge it might be more useful and visually beneficial to us if we can consolidate this information that's coming from an initiative with those underlying measures so that we don't have to be constantly navigating backwards and forwards you know, between our initiative screen and our, and our uh, KPI or, or measures areas. So to that end, we'll just show you quickly how you can consolidate these things via a dashboard. So the idea here would be just to create a new dashboard, we'll just call this dashboard, just to keep it simple, and we'll set it up as a blank dashboard. And again, I'll just jump in here into full screen mode, and we'll just add a couple, very quickly, just add a couple of, of objects on here, which will tie out to our initiatives and to the associated KPIs. So I'll click on chart, and I'll tie it to an initiative, and we'll tie it back to the develop training internally initiative. Okay, right. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this out of the way temporarily. And then we'll add a couple more things here. We'll add a couple more charts that will tie out to the tasks. So it'll be coming from an initiative and the underlying task of recruiting a training manager and finding a web platform. And then just a little bit of visual reorganization of this dashboard. I'll take our larger initiative and put it here up at the top and extend it out. And then I'll move some of the tasks around here underneath. Okay, and then the last couple of things we also wanna add here onto this dashboard, I'll actually put them up a little bit so I have room to, to roam. Um, is those two associated KPIs of revenue and um, wages and salaries and wages. So in here, whoops, sorry, I wanted to do a scorecard item, chart tied to a scorecard item, and it'll be from the revenue area. We wanna see training revenue, and we also wanna see from the operating expenses area, we wanna see salaries and wages. Okay, again, just a little bit of drag and drop here. So where I'm going with this, folks, is that you have now on this one dashboard, the visual presentation and consolidation of things that are coming from an initiative, and that would, of course, be the overall initiative itself, 
as well as the tasks associated with that initiative and the KPIs or, or values, you know, that those initiatives and tasks are intended to impact. And again, it all exists just on one nice consolidated dashboard. And I'll exit full screen mode. Okay. Um, all right. Moving on. Let me quick time check here. We're doing okay. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to cover with you is uh, a demonstration, another demonstration here, of making an initiative's performance into a KPI in a scorecard within Scoreboard. This is something that's not overly frequently done, uh, but there are certainly unique situations where someone may say, look, I've, I've got an initiative in place and it's going to be going on for, let's say, two years, and I'd really like to make the performance of that initiative something that gets included in to the evaluation of my of my performance in some other area of or some scorecard within within our business. So what I'll do here is just jump back in to scoreboard. And once again I'm gonna I'm gonna change organizations on us here. And the story here is that we have um, an information technology department organization. Okay. So in here, we've got a very simple scorecard just called information technology comprised of just four KPIs that we monitor to keep our fingers on the pulse of how we're doing within the information technology de department of our company. So we also, of course, as we saw earlier, in mobile world, this was via my screen captures I showed you earlier, within mobile world, if we go to the initiatives, we have an initiative to migrate servers to cloud. And what we'd like to do is employ our performance as we progress, you know, uh, to meet our, you know, percentage complete and budget spent to date on this initiative as that changes over time. We'd like that performance to be reflected back in the scorecard for the IT department. All right. So to that end, I'll return back to the IT organization and its scorecard. And what we're going to do here is just add a new scorecard item. So I've highlighted the information technology scorecard. We'll add a new scorecard item, which will be migrate server to cloud progress. It's going to be a KPI. We'll go ahead and leave the scoring type at the usual gold and red flag. Monthly for updating is perfect. The data type is percentage. That's correct. And same with aggregation. Now. With regard to the actual value, this is kind of the key to this process, is the actual value is going to be calculated, and we're going to set an equation where in the type dropdown, we're going to select initiative. And then we'll navigate out to the appropriate initiative, which again, in this case, lives in the Mobile World Inc. organization, and it's the Migrate Servers to Cloud initiative that we want to tie to. I'll select it and click Done. And then the calculation, you see that you have a pretty extensive list here of calculations that you can take advantage of. Like, what, what, you know, what value from that initiative do you want to portray via a KPI within this, this scorecard? And in our case, what we'd like to show is the percent complete. And then I'll click Add. And then we'll click Done. Okay. Now, before I leave, I do want to set some red flag and goal thresholds. We'll say that if we're below 40% complete, that should be red. And if we're above 70% complete, that should be green. Anywhere in between will be yellow. And in this case, I'm not going to take the time to set up any owners or updaters on this, this particular new KPI, but I'll just click Create. Okay. So we just successfully created, I'll get out of edit mode here, I'll click done to remove myself from edit mode, and we see that we have now a new KPI called Migrate Server to Cloud and its progress. And you can see that, of course, over time, as we go back in time, you know, for a while there, we weren't doing so hot, we were, you know, taking a while to get this up and running, but now we are, you know, past 70% complete. And if we look at where we are here, let's say at the end of October, it looks like we're kind of leveled out here. We're sort of stuck at 83%. But the idea here, of course, is this 83% is reflecting the performance of that initiative. So if I go back to the initiatives area and go to mobile world, I will expect to see, of course, 
that that initiative to migrate servers to cloud is going to be 83% done. So it's reflected here back in the initiatives graph. And I see that, you know, we're 83% complete. We're doing well budget budgetarily. We've only spent 110 K of our 150,000 budget. That's great. Okay. So that was, again, just a real quick demo on the ability to leverage initiatives, again, as feeders to a, a scorecard. And just let me just jump back into that scorecard one more time, um, into the scorecards area, and just confirm, just for you, that this information, you know, technology um, scorecard is, of course, now being equally influenced by IT effectiveness, IT availability index, and so on. And it's including, of course, the migrate server to cloud progress as an even participant in the overall calculation. So it's, it's carrying the same amount of weight as all the others. And again, if you need to adjust that, you can of course always go back in and adjust the weighting for any uh, this KPI just like any other KPI within Scoreboard. Okay, um, the last thing that we're gonna cover today, we're getting a little low on time, but the last thing uh, that I just wanna touch base with you guys on is a, a real quick demonstration of what you would see on your homepage if you've ever been assigned to an initiative, a task, or a milestone. So it's a, it's a super quick demo because it's pretty much right in front of you. So if you go to the home page, I'll show you an example of a couple things that you might see if you've been set up as an owner uh, of an initiative, a task, or a milestone. First and foremost, over on the right, the My Task area under your responsibilities along with the KPIs you own and update there are tasks right so if you are a, an initiative or task or a milestone owner th those will be listed for you here giving you quick and easy access to open them up and get in and you know do whatever type of updating might be required or investigation of performance or wh whatever you need to do as an owner of a, an initiative task or milestone also um, back on that home page, if changes have been made to initiatives or tasks or milestones, you may get a message in your new alert area. So in this case, this is effectively just telling me that somebody made some kind of a change to the increased quantity of leads um, initiative. And I can just simply click on it and go in here and take a look and see, you know, what's different. And I can go in and if there are updates, I might want to take a look and see what types of updates have been have been applied. And one thing that is important to understand, the changes I'm talking about that you would be alerted to are not the addition of just simple status updates. So if someone goes in here and says, as of today, we're now 80% done and we've spent, you know, $4,500, that change is not going to be reflected via an alert on my homepage. The type of change that you will be alerted to is if someone went in and edited this initiative and made some type of change back here to its, if you will, its properties, right? So if I change the total budget for this initiative to be $10,000, notice that down in the lower right-hand corner, there's a notify assigned users and groups of changes. So anyone who's an owner, or has been assigned it, you know, to this initiative, will be uh, alerted on their scoreboard homepage that a change has been made to that initiative. That's the type of alert that you could possibly see back on your your homepage. But again, so there's an example right there. The budget was changed from five thousand to ten thousand. Okay. All right, folks. Um, that pretty much wraps it up. Let me just bring back up my, my presentation deck here. Um, all right, just a quick review of what we've covered today. Um, introduction to initiatives, tasks, and milestones. Demonstration of the use and creation of initiatives, tasks, and milestones. How to relate them to scorecard items. And lastly, how to use initiatives as feeders to, to create KPIs in scorecards. I would like to invite you to, again, please join us in December for our next uh, free scoreboard webinar. Uh, we will be, uh, we don't have it scheduled just yet, but it'll probably be into the latter part of December. 
and we may end up, because December is just a busy holiday month, we may end up just recording it and alerting you to the existence of it towards the end of December for your leisurely viewing. Um, thank you very much for attending today. As I said earlier, I always welcome uh, customers and partners contacting me anytime. Again, I'm Tom Keating, and my email is tom.keating at spiderstrategies.com, or you can get to us through our education uh, email at learn at spiderstrategies.com. Again, thank you for attending. I hope it was helpful, and please have a great rest of your day.